I have a download for everybody. I'm going to send the link through the chat. Um, you should be able to click on that and go straight to the file, I think. Let me take a quick look and make sure. Oh, it's going to say you need to request access. Okay. Um, let's change the access to LCC student email. Okay, so if you click on that link and you're logged into your LCC email, you should be able to download it. <clears throat> and this will be also in the content section under rendering, lighting, and cameras, uh, under web resources, apps, plugins, downloads, etc. Arts 235, Maya Arnold Learning Scenes. This contains a whole bunch of different learning scenes. Um, I have a few from a from a uh, exercise we did last semester in Arts 234 and a few from the actual Maya Arnold uh, website, so uh, learning website. Um, what we're going to do is go through a couple of different case studies that we can play with some of the different features of Arnold and <clears throat> I'm going to show you through the use of some of their learning scenes what it can do. So um, the learning scenes um, come from, other than the Arts 234 examples that we're going to look at, come from the tutorial section of the Arnold uh, documentation. And I recommend going through this if you're going to be spending all, any amount of time or, or using Arnold in any serious capacity. there's. A lot more to be learned than what I can teach you in a couple sessions or probably even in, in one semester. But you will find um, under the learning scenes that these are all in that file you downloaded along with the Arts 234 scenes I mentioned. So these are all already there. Um, you don't have to download these again to do the tutorials. One of my favorites is the studio lighting robot. Um, this is a lot of fun to play with. And uh, the mesh light, we don't really need this scene to do mesh lights, but um, it does show what a mesh light does and it kind of plays with stuff. So, And it, Arnold also has a tune shader. Um, and we kind of did a lightsaber the other day. This one's a little fancier. So, uh, did you guys watch the video the other day? I'm gonna set my project to that folder. Mine is under desktop junk and then it's Arts 235 Arnold. Obviously yours might be in a different place but this is the folder you're looking for right here. And um, let's start, I think we're going to start with Beethoven. Okay, and um, this is going to, this is going to be so uh, irritating because you probably all beat yourself up trying to get this to look nice in Arts 234 and we're going to put one light in and it's going to look beautiful, so. Let's add an area light from the Arnold menu. Again, to reiterate, you want to go to the Arnold menu to, to add your lights, not the Create Lights menu. These lights will function, but they will not do what um, 
what you want the Arnold light to do. So I am going to zoom way out because I'm not quite sure where this guy is. Aha, there he is. And let's size this guy up. And I do want to create a camera. Um, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here. I meant to start on the render settings. So um, try to get in the habit of going straight to the render settings first thing. And I wanted to leave this on to remind you to turn it off, enable defa default light. Um, the idea being that we want to start most scenes from straight up black, literally no light whatsoever. And let's turn off and normalize on this area light so it will do the lighting that we are expecting it to. Soften it up a little bit. And okay. Uh, the image size is wrong. We always want to be at least HD 1080. Um, if you're doing stills and you can go a little bigger than that, that would be great. So um, if you're doing stills, maybe try uh, 4K square or, you know, if you want to um, do a wider aspect ratio, you can always enter in a, a larger width. So I'm not going to do that because render times. Render times are going to be insane. So let's change the render uh, engine to Arnold Renderer and go to the Arnold tab. And we're going to set the samples on all of the channels to three for now. And I think the rest of it we can leave alone for the moment. So let's close that. And let's go to the um, let's go to the rendering menu set, and I want to render this. I'm not sure if you set this here or not. I'm going to render this at 50% resolution. That was not the test, that was not the resolution I set. And if we play back the video, it will prove. I must have missed. Clacked when I meant to click. Okay, so 1080, render using resolution to 50% and this is correct now. Okay, so <clears throat> let's open the Arnold renderer and open Arnold render view and we'll pl press play and okay, so the Arnold render view ignores the Maya render settings so I can change that under one of these. Let's see which one it is. Is it view? Test resolution, 50%. And I'm going to stop that for now. Okay, and the next thing is to create a camera. So let's go to create cameras. I'm not even going to put an aim on it. And I'm going to look through the camera on my top left. That's just my MO. And we're 
we're looking at camera one shape now. Now this is a very glossy material. So we're getting a lot of hard reflections here. So, and we still have the half resolution. Maybe I should go down to quarter resolution. Speed this up a little more. And I'm going to grab that light and I am going to I'm going to make this use color temperature because I kind of like that better. It behaves a little bit more like a light and that's kind of the the point of this whole party is that uh, Arnold acts more like real world lights. So, um, you know, I say use color temperature. If you're using color temperature, I think it ignores, well, let's see. Yeah, it ignores the, the color altogether if you're using color temperature. So you use one or the other, but not both. Um, if you want any kind of colored light, then you have to turn that off and put the color on. Okay, so we're going to up the samples to three. the size a little bit and I'm going to increase the intensity just a little bit. No wait, intensity, yeah, intensity. Now I'm going to create a kick light that is going to illuminate the rim of the character here. And you can do this with a point light. Uh, I usually like my kick lights to be point lights, but um, you can also do it with an Arnold rendering, uh, an Arnold area light. Uh, I'm going to use a point light in this case. It does not hurt anything to add regular lights to your scene, into your Arnold scene. working. Um, let me just make sure it's positioned in a place where it can be seen. Oh, it might be outside the wall. Maybe that's it.
Yeah, it's not working at all. What am I missing? Sorry, bear with me. Now I'm now I'm stumped again. Let's see. Should be the answer. That was sort of the answer. Okay, radius is the fall off. I think it ignores this fall off. That's what it looks like. So let's put that behind. And I am going to go to the light linking editor, if I can remember where it is. I think it's under rendering editors. And I'm going to turn off the link to the um, to the walls. I want it to exclude the walls. I don't want the walls to be green. So I don't want this to be green at all. I was just turning that on to make sure that the um, that the light that I put in is illuminating. So light link sources to surfaces. Lighting and shading. Lighting and shading make light links. Let's select the light first just in case. Okay, let's do light linking editor then. We'll do it light centric. So, we can select the point light, um, and we can also unlink it from the default uh, light set, but that's not really what I'm interested in. I just want to unlink it from the cube so that it's only illuminating Beethoven here. Isn't this so irritating, like after beating yourself up for weeks last semester? I, I know it, uh, it must be making you want to scream right now. Like, oh, I can just do that. <laughs> and that makes a really nice kick. So um, maybe I put the exposure down a little too far, but yeah, we've got a really nice rim there. So, um, I wanted to show one other thing with Beethoven here. I mean, you could put in a fill light for sure. Um, you you kind of get the idea at this point. But I wanted to show a few things about Arnold's surfaces. Um, 
there are a couple applied already. There's a S Arnold surface on his buttons and on his tuxedo jacket. So um, I'm going to stop this and I will show you those real quick. Render hypershade, render hypershade, and under these different material nodes, um, there's Beethoven Buttons 1 and Beethoven Coat 1. I think those are the right ones. No, those are not the right ones. Hold on. Okay, it's Buttons and Coat. It's these two. Right, okay. And this Arnold renderer is a surface like Fong or Lambert or Blin, uh, but mostly all it uses is AI standard surface. Uh, there, there are others, but um, most of what you do with what we were previously using is accomplished with AI standard surface. So the coat, I gave it a little bit darker gray. Let's go a little darker here. And let me undock this and not have it quite so maximized. And let's turn off lighting because that's crazy. The, the lighting doesn't show the same way that, uh, that Arnold does, so... I don't know, there's probably some way to fix that, but for now I'll just leave the lighting off. So the coat... I have given a dark gray color and I can give it a specular and the specular just has a few different settings here um, than what you saw like on Fong but they basically do some of the same things and, and just like what I always say is of course just play with it until you get the setting you want if you want to make it anisotropic, you can introduce anisotropy right there and give it give the give the specular highlight some rotation. Um, you can make it a little more metal here if you want. Now I want to um, show you how to apply one of these surfaces as well. So let's see if I can find. Let's see if I can find the, uh, that's the shirt, the tie is what I'm looking for. So this one is the tie, it's called Beethoven Tie 1. Now if you right click on that and go to select objects with material, you can see my selection is the tie because that is, this is the part of the mesh that has has that that uh, surface applied to it. So you can go through with all of these and select individual parts of the surface and change the color. Uh, and then we do the right click, assign new material, um, and down here under the Maya and favorites is the Arnold shaders. And like I said, probably 99 or more percent of what you're going to do is the AI standard surface right here. And that is, um, like I said, that encompasses everything, all the basic solid materials that we've learned already. So, and let's give that a lovely, beautiful red color. And we'll give it a little bit of noise in the diffuse. Specular, I'm just going to tamp it down a tad. And I 
think Olivia just asked a question, and I am... Give me a moment while I try to get back to the chat here. How do you apply different shaders to different parts of the mesh? Um, yeah, I'll get there in just a second. Um, so, giving it just a little spectral. I just want to kind of increase the roughness a little bit. And then we can do a um, we can do a render view if you want, or um, you can render either way. So I think when you click this button, it will honor the setting the the fifty percent thing that people use the render. Version. A lot of the philosophy my software is uh, hey just uh, figure it out because obviously you're very smart so. So good luck, figure it out, hope you're a programmer. So, and it actually came out quite lovely. That is a nice little bow tie right there. So, um, this is certainly a very glossy surface on the face. It had everything that I haven't messed with yet. And it might be, it might be but um, all that stuff comes up. And, and those are using a f standard Fong surface like what we've been using already. So those surfaces and those lights do interact with the mo with the Arnold renderer um, and will provide you with the basic functions to it. Um, I do recommend definitely if you're going to be rendering to send it a habit hydrogen shader. Um, and, well, so okay, escape and take a few seconds. Cancel. There we go. And let's go ahead and open Griffin. This, if you do see this message, this will show up sometimes on some of your older scenes. It might show up on tutorial scenes that you see. Um, tutorial scenes that you download, you might see this. It says file contains mental ray nodes. Um, the mental ray plugin is not loaded and it never will be. Um, the mental ray renderer is the former incarnation of the photon mapper, which is now Arnold. So we're going to take all those mental ray nodes and um, just delete them or just ignore them. But it doesn't hurt anything that they're there, so you can just press OK on this. The other one that you might see is data has been lost. Just press OK on that message, and if it looks right, it's fine. Usually, that message seems to mean nothing at all. So, uh, so this is the lion statue, and this has been smoothed. So it's going to have a lot more polygons to it. So I'm going to find the smooth node, and I'm going to put the division levels at zero to get the polygon count back down for a minute. And uh, just keep that smooth node handy. And let's do a quick render settings peak. Go down to render options. Turn off the default light, please. Change the image size to 1080p. And change the renderer to Arnold. Go ahead and up your samples a little bit. And if your renderings are getting choppy between 
um, the balancing photons and the lights that you're using. You can up these samples to get that more smooth. Again, of course, the cost is render time. So, uh, so to apply a surface to a particular part of this model, um, what you want to do is go into the face component selection and I'm going to try a selection around the nose. So I'm just I'm just doing a shift selection. Or if you want to be cool, you can paint the selection on. There you go. That's way cooler. And I'll just frame that up. doesn't want to select those, so whatever. I'll let that go. Let it go. Let it go. No, wrong Disney movie. It's the circle of life. Why does it not want to select that one? That's weird. Okay, whatever. So there's my nose selection, and I will right-click and assign new material. You want to do this before you deselect because if you deselect, it will, you'll have to make that selection again. After you assign a different material, you can select by the material. So uh, we'll just, I don't know, we'll put a fong on there and I'll make it nose. And we'll make that a black color. So, and if you want to select any of those surfaces, you can go to the Hypershade window. And any of those materials that are in there, you can right click on and select objects with materials. So, it actually selects the specific components with that material, not just the whole object. So, um, Let's do, I should create a camera, but I'm going to skimp and just kind of fudge it a little bit here. Um, let's do a, switch to object mode here. Do a couple of renderings here. I'm going to go back to my smooth node that I talked about a minute ago and put that back up to two because like I said that was going to be crazy oh that's interesting that was not the outcome I expected There might be a problem with the uh, geometry on this lion because the nose should not shift over to the ear when you smooth it. That is not supposed to happen. just leave it. My guess is there's a problem with the geometry. Maybe it's not all, you know, it looks like it's not all quads. Maybe that's the problem. But anyway, we'll let that go on this one, but something to keep in mind. Uh, let's do an Arnold light, and we will light this thing, and kind of point it up at the lion. And this one was to light the lion with colored lights. So I'm going to turn on some light colors here. Shadow 
density. You can also um, give your shadows a little bit of color. Usually that's a good idea. Not much, but just a tiny. Like pure digital black is not really the color of shadows. So um, feel free to use like a dark blue is a good choice most of the time, especially with sunlight. And let's go ahead and get our Arnold rendering going. Spooky. I like it. Taking the test render down further because I don't want this to take forever. Arnold lights will create a second area light and let's move that over here and size it up that's pretty much a given is you're always going to size these these area lights up like right out of the gate and I'm going to angle it maybe a little downward turn off normalize as always And let's give it a lovely purple color. the standard stuff, add a couple of samples here and there. And yeah, there you go. That's that's the color lighting assignment in 10 seconds. <laughs> uh, let's do one more scene. Actually, I'm probably going to do more than one more scene. Let's go to the interior scene from the lighting assignment. And that's going to be room interior is what I'm looking for. And this one we're going to do something a little different. This is what I was talking about earlier where it says errors have occurred while reading this. That may result in data loss. Please see the script editor for details. Chances are it's fine. If it looks fine and it renders fine, then it's fine. So uh, we're going to get rid of this backdrop here. We're not going to use that. Um, what we're going to do instead, let me get a quick render here, just a really fast render going. And I am going to turn off my default light. For the image size, I'm going to go really small, 640 by 480. Turn on Arnold Renderer. And there's a um, series of tutorials that goes through every setting in here that explains what they are. Um, I would encourage you to at least skim it and get an idea of what all this stuff does. Uh, let's go to Arnold Lights and we're going to do a sky dome. So we're going to light this room interior with its exterior world. So, and by default, if you just put a sky dome in there, it will light the inside of it. But it has these interesting little utilities that will help 
help that process be more efficient. And those are called light portals. And I'm rendering the wrong view. There we go. Okay, so um, the light outside is, is heaven, pretty much. That's probably too bright, but you can see it is coming into the windows already. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put what Arnold calls light portals on these windows. And that is a way of optimizing the light that comes into your interior from the outdoor sky lighting, if that makes sense. So not that you can't do it this way or that it's particularly wrong or bad, but putting these light portals on the windows or whatever openings you have is going to really greatly optimize the rendering and sweeten it quite a bit. So let's see if I can, I'm going to select put this, I'm going to have to put that to the side for a few minutes. So, <clears throat> let's do an Arnold lights, and it's right above the physical sky on lights. It's called a light port. And I want this to be about the same size and width as the, um, so if you use snapping to get it exact, that would be perfect. I'm not sure why my scene is sluggishly. It shouldn't be that bad on a wireframe, but. Lighting's turned off on every view. the render running in the background, that's why. Let's stop that render. That's better. Okay. And I'm going to turn this to face inward into the scene. Actually, I'll set that numerically to negative 90. Oops. Rotate negative 90. Rotate Y negative 90 is what I'm looking for. And that little line coming out the front of it is the indicator of where it is pointed. So, um, I'm going to get this sized and set pretty close to where the window is. Okay, so it should be coming in, that the light portal should be right there, and it should let a bit more light if I did it right. Okay. I'm going to duplicate this and put it on. You can see a little more light coming in there. Oh, that was duplicating more than I bargained for. I will, let's 
let's rotate that to negative 180 because this is going to be facing off the north wall. And I'm going to probably have to start using the outliner to select these guys because the mesh is getting in the way a little bit. There we go. And I'll duplicate that one again. Rotate it another 90 degrees. So that's negative 270. And we'll get that one on the east wall. So the camera is pointing at these light uh, windows and this window, but I am still copying the portal to the other windows so that they will be letting light in from the uh, outdoor as well. So I've got one, two, three, four. And one more. Let's go ahead and that rotation can just be at zero, I think. should see more light on the inside and it should also be a little bit better in the handling. So, and that did bring in a little bit of light. I was looking for more than that. Um, so I need to check on the settings on this. I'm you from the future, here to tell you to choose free cancellation on Hotels.com. Hello and welcome back everyone. In today's video I will be focusing on lighting, mostly basic lighting, um, and I will cover dome lights, area lights, gobo filters, volume scattering, mesh lights, photometric lights, which is now my room. And I snap this and I extrude like so, this is now the window, I delete that and make the, this more like so and there's the robot, delete the sphere and if I create the on and light now, uh, the portal light portal, and I snap this here, make this bigger and rotate this and that's an AO wireframe Make this a bit smaller, something like this. This is now the portal light, and currently I don't have any dome lights, so I just create a new one, lights, um, sky dome light, and let's look through here and see what we got. So if I hit IPR now, of the portal light enabled. This is currently what it looks like. If I increase the intensity of light, uh, exp 
exposure like so you would say oh but that's not really clean but if I store this now and I hide the portal I'm not sure if you need to delete it or hide it okay I deleted it now so even if it's hidden it still works so this is now without the portal light just all the information from the dome light going through that little box window and look at this I did not change anything else it's really just amazing what the portal light does and you can see it's it's really amazing what they can do so for interior scenes I would highly encourage you guys to use portal lights for your windows like Okay, so I think I just need to up the intensity of the sky dome and figure out a way to make it not so crazy on the windows, but let's let's just try going into the channel box, or I'm sorry, the uh, attribute editor on the sky dome, and let's bring the intensity. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Still be doing this without those portal light boxes there, it just would not work as well. And this needs some more samples. Oh, and I've got normalize up on with that sky dome, so I'm gonna turn it off. Probably gonna blow out like we're in heaven getting nuked. Maybe not. I kind of thought it would. And you can give your uh, skylight, again, a little bit of a color if you want to. Just like maybe a light blue or a very light yellow. Just a little bit of color. Crazy with it because it can look really icky. But yeah, I just needed a higher intensity on the uh, on the sky dome there. There's a, a lot of possibility to make this into a night sky by just tweaking a couple settings too, um, or a, a I don't know if physical sky works as well, or if it has to be the sky dome. So. And you can also set an image and light with an image with these with these sky domes, which is also something I encourage you to do, where it says color. Uh, you can try putting an image in there. I don't know why it's not going to the there it is. It was just sluggish, just lagging. So this is an image of a waterfall lighting the scene, but um, obviously you could also choose like a uh, sky. The other thing was this one was supposed to be supposed to be um, some different times of day. So I wonder if we put a night sky texture in there. Let's see. Eh, I'll use the Minecraft one, sure. Why not? Save image, and let's go to... Source images, night sky. 
you do want those uh, higher resolution like JPEG is not ideal for this um, you noticed perhaps that the first one I, I linked to an EXR file and that is like a high definition file um, it has more depth of color and that is really something that you that you want to have with these um, skylights so here's another one that, that comes with your um, tutorial files but just for an example let's open up the night sky one here and take a look at that so again we gotta figure out this glow but probably the, uh, the EXR files would work better for that let's put it inside a giant factory with that with that other one that was Sophie HDRI well it sort of looks like a factory maybe a studio yeah those those high definition um, render files so JPEGs work too so uh oh my gosh um let's just show one more thing just one more thing because you got to get your money's worth so let's go and look at um i want to look at the uh the good old robot i love that robot Let's see, is this, there's two robot scenes, so I'm not sure. No, I think it's this one, Studio Lighting Robot is the one I'm looking for. So, and this is the one, that video that we just watched, this is the one that guy was working with. So, um, it has like this little toy robot, and its eyes light up and stuff. you can create um, some different you can create some different materials and lighting schemes with this thing let's go to the outliner and I'm gonna nuke all the lights right away and we're just gonna create one uh, we're gonna do area light. Like I said, most of these will be area light or um, sky dome light. One of the two in most cases. And I'm going to point it a little bit to the side. And let's select the robot and frame it up. Go to the Arnold render view. Get it started. See so one area to render as well. So use that also as a time saver. And on the light, I want to, as always, um, turn off normalize bring up the samples at least just a little bit okay I'll do a color temperature light and just bring it down slightly I love that that warm look on the lights. Um, this robot has some wonderful textures applied to it that you can definitely play with. Um, so AI standard surface on the robot. I'm going to bring the specular down a little uh, I bring it up a little bit sorry just make it awesome. and okay Thank you. 
diffuse roughness, acting like there's something connected to it, but I'm going to let that go because I am not quite sure how to disconnect that. It's not accepting my right click. That's kind of what I was looking for. Nice. Okay. Now I'm going to select the eyes. I do is to do the eye. Stop this. It's going to be churning away. Robot. Oh my goodness. These guys are pros and they didn't name their stuff. Look at that. Now that's. I'm just trying to find an object here that I want to make it to a mesh light and I think I think I'm going to do the little ball on the top of the antenna here 230 okay I'm going to do an Arnold lights mesh light and I'm going to turn my renderer back on here and bump up the intensity, light visible, and I will use color temperature. Give it two samples. So again, this is, this is talking about the, the color temperature of the light. It's talking about Kelvin. And it is, um, in physics, the higher the temperature, the bluer the light is, and the lower the temperature, the orangey and the red the light is. So it's the opposite art. <laughs> the warmer colors are yellow and orange, and the cooler colors are yellow. Physics is the opposite. Let's check here. Let's see. I went to open my file for the robot, and the geometry for a couple of parts appears to be missing, but they are still there. Went to the outliner and pressed one on my keyboard for each part, and they reappeared. Uh, not sure on that one. It, it could possibly have been hidden, or um, you might check and see that um, everything is being shown. If it's not, you can click show all, but if you got it to show back up, then that's what counts. So, put a couple extra samples on that one. I'm going to make this a little more print on the solar channel for this particular light. So I'm going to, if I up this to two, we should see it a little more emphasized on the, on the um, specular highlights as opposed to um, just in general. I'm going to up the indirect as well, and that will lighting, indirect lighting with this particular light. This is the one, that little ball on top of the antenna that I'm playing with right now. Volume, I'm going to take that up too. Uh, so this has been a look at the Arnold renderer, the lights, and a little bit on the surfaces.
this particular person is always a lot of fun for me. And I hope you enjoyed it too. If you go to our section in D2L, you will find a link to the Arnold for Maya user guide and Arnold tutorials at solid angle, Arnold render settings. These are all just links to different places on the same site. So that's all stuff that's here. And this has all kinds of Arnold tutorials that you can go through and learn more about Arnold. Um, the lights, the shaders, the render settings, um, the textures. Um, apparently Arnold even uh, interacts with cameras or creates Arnold cameras or Arnold camera settings. Arnold provides cylindrical fisheye camera, orthographic camera, perspective camera, spherical camera, and VR camera. So cool. All right, um, so that's it. Y'all have a nice day.